Hello there, it's time to build a TIE Fighter. This is the ancient AMT ERTL 135th ish scale TIE Advanced Darth Vader ship in the original Star Wars movie. This was released just after the movie came out, and in this video, I'm going to try to bring it up a level or two, fix some fit issues, add some greeblies, do some extra panel lines, and some extra details to try to get it to a more screen accurate version. So, Stay tuned and come and have a look. I picked this kit up on eBay and it's the flight display version. And you know how I like all my aircraft or spacecraft in flight. It came full, almost fully assembled. So I thought, ah, quick build. I'll just paint the cockpit more or less. And the Dark Lord himself, the cockpit doesn't have that much detail. It's not very screen accurate. I thought, nah, it'll do. Quick build. So I put some primer on it just to see what it looked like. And, you know, it was okay. The detail is a bit vague. It's a bit fair here and there. I mean, it's a 40-year-old plus kit. But I thought, no, nah, this will do. It'll be fine. I put it inside the acrylic clear stand, that big brown disc there. And I thought, no, nah, this can't stand. I've got to do something. So, out comes the Bandai. This is the 172nd scale kit. It's fairly new. Almost goes together like a dream. Lots more detail, even though it's, you know, one quarter the size. So I thought, no, nah, I've got to fix this. So, out came out the sanding sticks, and all the details, all the, the fit issues had to be addressed and fixed. There was lots of gaps and laps and slaps and baps, and lots of Tamiya putty had to be used to, to fix up all the, all the bits there that just wouldn't fit properly, no matter what I tried to do. I had to trim pieces here and there, but I wanted it to look good. I knew most of it would be covered with greeblies. Out came the evergreen. So I got a big stack of this stuff. And um, I've had experience making greeblies before, and there's all my spare parts from, from other builds. So, into it. So, I started with the outer wings and added just bits of sprue, bits of evergreen sheet there, cut at different angles, and some other parts like 1700 and 1350 scale ship parts, and just to busy it up, just to make it a little bit more interesting. So, the inside of the wings got detailed as well. And then the little gaps and, and parts that are inside, I don't know what those are, those wells, but uh, I used mainly extra landing gear from my, um, from my other builds, my other aircraft builds where I always build wheels up. So all these, all these landing gear parts, I always save them. And here I am showing you how to make quite a simple, nice part from, from molded in uh, landing gear bits, just to add a bit more interest. So here's the final result after all the greebling. This took many nights and futzing around before I was happy, getting it all right, getting the right level of detail. I used the Bandai kit and screen references to get this as close as possible. One of the fun bits was, see that yellow part on the back there? That's a Sherman bogey from a 135th scale tank. I had a spare one of those and it was fun to get that to fit. So next I had to drill out the exhaust ports. There's um. For the twin ion engines, that's how the TIE Fighter gets its name. There's four of them on this one, not, not just the two. So first a small hole and then a bigger hole. And I filled that up later on with some crystal clear. Next, do some panel line scribing. Around the cockpit, there's no, there's no panel line. So first I used the trumpeter, nice and fine one, that blade, just to mark out about eight lines. And then using the Tamiya one, which has a thicker, deeper blade, I was able just to clean it up there. I went around the entire kit and rescribed most of the panel lines. Some of them are quite soft. Here we are, I've put a, made a mount behind the, the cockpit there to install onto a base. And that base is made from Bandai 172 Death Star tiles with just a little bit of evergreen stock. And so I made a bit of a, a mount there for, the, for a carbon fiber rod. And that's how she looks, all ready to go before priming. Looks a lot better, I think, compared to the clear acrylic disc. So for priming, I always use, almost always use black and I use Steinle Res, which you can buy as MIG one shot or ultimate primer as well from UMP. I started with Tamiya medium sea gray and sky gray as my first coat. I like to marble this on onto a black base. And if you want to look at any of my other black basing videos, look at my original video to show you why I prefer this to pre shading. And for spaceships in particular, it's really, really good technique because you can make it as worn and weary as you want. 
in the end, for um, Darth Vader's TIE fighter, I'm pretty sure his crew chief wouldn't like it to be too dirty, but I could dial it up or dial it down just by doing this marbling stage. And it's pretty easy. I have sped this up a bit, but it's a lot easier than pre-shading. You don't need to be a whiz with an airbrush. There it is all done, all the way around. That's the first marbling stage. And over on the wings, I should have masked all those wing solar panels first. They're a bit of a pain to do later on. The top coat, I'm going to use royal light grey. You could use a bluer grey here, but I prefer to go for a cleaner look. Uh, the blue can look really can look really dark. So all I'm doing here is with a nice thin coat, I'm just filling in the gaps. So I'm bringing the uh, the opacity up, just making it a little bit more clearer. And um, so there I am doing the wings of master panels. I should have done that first. So if you're going to do this kit, mask the panels. I also had some overspray. I was lazy. I didn't put masking tape in the middle. Easily fixed. So there it's all painted up. It's looking a bit stark, however. Um, I decided that I'd, I might add a bit more variation here. So the next thing I did was mask off quite a few panels. and painted them up with some dark grey. Can't remember which dark grey it was, just pick and choose one, doesn't really matter. But something with a lot more contrast to the, the underlying base coat, just to make it a bit more interesting. Now you could pick out some more details here with a brush, all those greeblies, particularly on the insides of the wings, just to really up the contrast. So you can, you can go quite nuts with this kit because it's so big. But I wanted to make it fairly screen accurate. So here it is, all ready to go for the next stages. You may notice I've added a bit of staining there on those, I assume they're exhaust or some cooling vents behind the cockpit. So that was just done with a bit of Tamiya smoke, just to add a bit of interest. So next, I'm going to do some dry brushing. I'm using Tamiya's Titanium Silver. I really like this because it's got a bit of a, a gold or a sharp tint to it. And I hit some of the metallic parts on the outside of the cockpit there and also in the main ports where I've added all those extra greeblies. So that really highlights the uh, the extra parts you've put in and give it a sort of a more of a more of a spaceshipy sort of look. I don't know what you call that. <laughs> Alright, so after a gloss coat, I added an overall pin wash and I used MIG's dark wash here. You can use any type of, of dark wash to get the effect you want. Now the rescribing uh, on the old panel line kits really helped here and helped the uh, the wash flow, but I had had to go back a few times and hit it a, a bit more because uh, sometimes the wash wouldn't hold. Some of the panel lines are a bit shallow, and when you're cleaning up, you sometimes go over and, and remove too much of it. I also used the same wash, just to add a little bit of staining here and there. But remember, Vader's crew chief didn't want to get choked out if he had a too dirty ship, so. This took a long time. It's a big ship, 135th scale. So um, just take your time and you could you could change it up and add some different colors for your washes as well. You could use uh, a dark gray or, a, or even a, a lighter brown. So after a coat of dull coat, that's my new favorite MAC coat. It's looking really good. I've popped the front cockpit piece on in black. So I'm pretty happy with that. But next, I had to fill in those exhaust ports. Now, I covered them up with crystal clear, and they've made for a nice sort of lens effect. If I was going to do this again, oh, here we go. I'm just going to paint it with some clear red. Come on, camera. You can focus. There you go. Maybe the cameraman's getting choked by Vader. Uh, the clear red. So just paint it over those, those lenses. But if I was going to do this again, I'd probably use LEDs and also in the cockpit as well. So probably on the Bandai one, I'll probably, probably put some red LEDs in there just for a better effect. But pretty easy to do here. Just be careful with your brush and just to get that those engines going. And there we are, it's almost done. Time to put it on the base. Add some blaster bolts, I stole them out of a Bandai kit. And it's done. So that was a real fun build. Now resurrecting old kits can be fraught with danger and frustration. It's a path to the dark side for sure. But it's a good practice for your skills, stretch them out a bit and not worrying too much about the outcome. So I hope you like that, thanks for watching, stick around and I'll see you in the next video. Here's some more photos, cheers.